Hi, my name's Ian Goodwin. I work for Agriculture Victoria at the Tatura Smart Farm. I lead one of the PIPS3 projects on Apple systems and Apple technologies. Uh, today, um, I'm with Alessio Scalisi from, he's also from Agriculture Victoria and works on this project, the PIPS3 project. Um, we're just gonna give a bit of an update today on how we've been uh, uh, testing the cartographer, this machine right here. Uh, and how we actually are um, trying to use the data for management purposes, uh, obviously for apple groves. So Alessio, um, first of all, you know how how far have we got with um, trying to apply some of the measurements we're taking of flower number and fruitlet number for the purposes of irrigation, uh, for not irrigation, for for thinning. Hmm. Yeah, uh, thanks, Ian. Um so we've been using cartographer uh, for uh, measuring uh, crop load and flower numbers in uh, uh, this setting of the sundial orchard with different rootstocks. So it, it's been really good to assess the difference between the rootstock effect on uh, crop load. And we've been using those numbers to uh, basically manage uh, thinning this season. So last season we validated the technology. This season we are actually calibrating uh, new models and then using those numbers, those calibrated numbers to manage uh, thinning in the three different rootstocks in the Sundial Orchard. Uh, this is the potential of uh, crop load estimation, so we can assess both uh, spatial variability and also uh, temporal variability over time. So we can compare that uh, uh, flower number prediction done at full bloom with the prediction of crop load at different stages during the uh, fruit growth uh, season. So we are trying to estimate how many fruitlets per cluster uh, are uh, detected on individual trees and or you know plots and at the same time we're also testing additional features um, but this is an ongoing kind of like research. Yeah yeah so Alessio the um, what's the output you know what what do you actually look at what, what can a grower you know see how does he visualize this sort of stuff? Yeah, so there are different levels. The, the first level is uh, Green Atlas through this uh, produces uh, special maps, heat maps with uh, variation. You know, you can assess the variability of, for example, uh, fruit counts, crop load or fruit diameter or fruit uh, color. And a second level of output is uh, numbers, you know, the actual raw data that need someone that is actually capable to process that information so that you can develop block specific uh, relationships for example between fruit diameter crop load fruit color and tree geometry and other parameters that can be predicted with this technology what this technology can also measure is tree ge geometry um, so how does that how, how do you envisage that being used for management purposes yeah in my opinion uh, if we can assess the tree size, canopy size uh, in the block, then we can also standardize uh, pruning operations. And, you know, like we can have sta standardized trees that basically reflect the optimal uh, tree canopy size, tree architecture that can maximize uh, crop load, you know, yield and quality at the end of the season. So the bottom line is that, you know, sure, we've gone through a process of validation or calibrating for a start and validating the instruments that are on this to do things like fruit diameter and fruit color and 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 flower number um, but we're always trying to think of how we can actually how a grower can utilize that data for management purposes <music>